Nobody is going to be buying an M2 Ultra Max Studio for the purposes of gaming, except that's exactly what I just did. And yes, I know that the M2 Ultra does not represent the majority of users or gamers. However, it gives us a glimpse into the future of what the graphical potential of the Apple Silicon Mac is, whether it's a future M3, M4, M5 chip. We can kind of see where that might be headed to with the M2 Ultra. But today we're going to be testing out a whole bunch of games that run on this machine, including Mac games that run through the Rosetta 2 translation layer, or games that are natively optimized for the ARM64 chip. And we'll be testing out Windows games running through the game Importing Toolkit, which is a new method of translating Windows, DirectX 11 and 12 games onto the Apple Silicon Mac. And the results are very interesting. It works better and worse than you might think. And finally, we were looking at what the cutting edge of game emulation looks like on the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra. So first up, we are looking at the game No Man's Sky. This is the most major high profile macOS release. It is a native ARM game that has been optimized with Metal 3 and Metal FX. Here we're testing at the Ultra preset at 4K resolution. And we're making use of Metal FX Temporal mode with quality settings set to balanced. On the planet's surface, we're getting a very respectable 80 to 110 FPS. And Metal FX here is doing some great work helping to reduce the amount of GPU time by rendering at a lower resolution and upscaling up to 4K, all whilst retaining very good image quality. Now frame rate is normally consistently high, except for times when you're warping around or switching from space to a planetary surface. This will dip to as low as 20 or so FPS, but this sort of frame rate dip isn't necessarily indicative of gaming performance. That's because we're also masking the kind of level loading that's happening in the background as we go from simple space into complex geographic features on a planet. So overall, No Man's Sky works great at 4K on the M2 Ultra, and it's definitely one of the showcase games for this system. So next up we have Resident Evil Village, which is another high profile macOS release natively optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac and making full use of metal and metal FX. We are playing the game at 4K resolution, all of the settings turn on to high, with the metal FX mode set to quality. So this is another game which makes excellent use of metal effects. And when the mode is set to quality, it's actually very hard to tell that this is rendering at a resolution that's lower than 4K. So it's relatively straightforward to get good frame rates in static scenes, but when we have action scenes too, the frame rate seems to hold up even in the 90s. This is despite the fact that this is running at 4K on a Mac, the M2 Ultra is definitely holding up, and Resident Evil Villages managed to work great on the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra. Next up, we are testing out the game Layers of Fear, which is a remake of the original first-person horror game, which just got a simultaneous release on Windows and macOS last week. Again, we're taking advantage of the M2 Ultra's power with this recent release and running everything at high at 4K, but without Metal FX turned on, we're only able to reach a frame rate of about 20 or so FPS, which certainly isn't playable. Turning Metal FX on to quality mode raises the frame rate from about 25 or so up to about 39, 40 FPS. But setting the motor to performance really gives the best frame rate possible and allows us to hit very close to 4K 60 FPS. For me, this is the best way to play this kind of game, running at 4K, getting a decent frame rate and making this still very playable. And of course, the game is gorgeous. This is one of the first Unreal Engine 5 games that's been released for the Apple Silicon Mac. Now the game supports HDR if you have a compatible screen, you can turn that setting on. However, ray tracing support seems to be disabled at the moment. Hopefully this will get an update in the future because Mac hardware theoretically should be able to handle ray tracing support, but we haven't seen a game take advantage on Mac yet. So next up, we're looking at the popular multiplayer game Dota 2. Now this game is definitely one of the most popular games on Steam, consistently topping the charts along with CSGO. So today we're running at 4K using the second faster preset. And the game runs using the Vulkan graphics API, which the Apple Silicon Mac does not support. So it's actually using an intermediary layer called Molten VK. And on top of all of this, this is still an Intel binary being run through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. And although the game is fairly basic graphically, it can be still quite demanding to run at 4K. And it's nice to see here that we're capping out at about 110, 120 FPS. Now I'm running this at low because most people just want to be able to play this game at a competitive frame rate. And I definitely said that this seems to work pretty well on the M2 Ultra Max Studio. So next up is the popular multiplayer free-to-play shooter Counter-Strike GO or CSGO. This is the number one most played multiplayer game on Steam right now and has been for basically more than a decade. 
And although by numbers alone this is probably also the most popular Mac multiplayer game too, unfortunately the engine is still stuck on an old version of OpenGL, partly because Apple has deprecated newer versions of OpenGL on recent versions of macOS. And although this is running basically on most of the settings set to low at 4K, in theory with hardware as powerful as this we should be getting way more than 200 FPS at this resolution. And partly the fault lies with Valve, who have basically neglected the macOS ports of this game for many years, and has basically done the minimum amount of work possible to keep this game running on modern Apple Silicon Macs. But it looks like this might be changing in the future because Counter-Strike 2 is going to be replacing CSGO in the future, and there are rumours that work is ongoing to implement Molten VK support on CS2 in the future using the Source 2 engine. And hopefully this is going to fix a lot of the performance and graphical issues with Counter-Strike on Mac and bring CS2 to a new generation of Mac gamers. So next up we're looking at the game Baldur's Gate 3, which is a third person turn based RPG that's still in early access, however it has an excellent macOS port which runs as a universal binary which allows Intel and Apple Silicon Macs to run this game. Here we're running graphical settings at 4K at ultra quality settings, however we're only getting around 35 FPS in this initial scene, however if we turn on AMD FSR 1.0 and enable upscaling set to the quality preset, then we can easily run this game at 4K and it's maxing out at 60 FPS. So yes, this isn't Metal FX, but it does a very similar job, helping to get Baldur's Gate 3 working on Ultra settings at 4K on the M2 Ultra. So next up is the game Diablo 4. So this is actually a Windows game being run using something called the Game Porting Toolkit. And this is a brand new method of running Windows games on Apple Silicon Macs. If you want to find out more about how to get this working, then make sure to check out the link in the description for my Game Porting Toolkit kit tutorial. But basically what makes this method exciting is that we can now run DirectX 12 games on Apple Silicon Macs for the very first time. And Diablo 4 is a DirectX 12 game as well and it manages to perform surprisingly well at 4K resolution on the M2 Ultra. Now if you straight up run the game at 4K medium you're only going to get about 40 FPS. However turning on FSR 2 to performance mode gives us a frame rate that's a lot closer to 50 to 60 FPS and is more than capable of handling handling high frame rate gameplay at 4K resolution with lots of monsters and spell effects happening on screen at the same time. Now if you really needed that 60 FPS gameplay, you could easily achieve this by turning down the resolution or turning down some of the detail levels and you'll be able to get that sweet spot of 60 FPS. So anyway, Diablo 4 is definitely a triumph of the game porting toolkit and it runs great on the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra, but not every Windows game is going to perform nearly as well as this. So next up we're testing the game GTA 5. So again this is a Windows game being run through Game Porting Toolkit on the M2 Ultra. This is being played with basically default settings at the 4K resolution. Here we're testing out the Steam Rockstar version being played at 4K. So GTA 5 was never particularly well optimized for Windows and this is reflected in the translation layers being used in the Game Porting Toolkit. We just aren't able to get a decent frame rate out of this. We're getting about 30, 35. Now this is technically playable, certainly better Better than the PS3 version I played back in the day, but it's a little bit underwhelming considering that this is the M2 Ultra. However, this isn't the fault of Game Porting Toolkit, it's just a badly optimized game. This method actually runs way better than using Parallels or Crossover, which has worse performance and a lot more stutter. The Game Porting Toolkit version is actually relatively stutter free. And interestingly, we're able to play GTA Online as well. Now, the multiplayer mode of this game introduces substantial overhead, however again it's surprisingly playable. And it looks like there are no issues at all joining an online multiplayer race, issues that you might have faced occasionally when you're playing this through crossover or parallels. This method of playing GTA Online is basically the best method, and of course if you needed an extra boost in performance you can enable resolution scaling and also drop the main resolution of the game as well, and you'll get substantially better performance. So next up we're looking at a bunch of games which actually perform surprisingly badly on the M2 Ultra using Game Porting Toolkit. So in my testing I played the game Game Hogwarts Legacy and unfortunately it seemed like the performance of this on the M2 Ultra was terrible. Here the game is running at 1080p at medium settings with FSR 2 set to ultra performance and the M2 Ultra can only hit 15 FPS. 
Now this should be impossible because on my M1 Max chip, I could run this at 1440p using FSR performance. And my M1 Max is easily doubling performance of the M2 Ultra when it should be the other way around. Because the M2 Ultra has virtually doubled the number of GPU cores, I'd be expecting the M2 Ultra to be running at 60 FPS, especially at 1080p. And I was experiencing similar issues with the game Elden Ring which seemed to perform much worse than on other Macs. Here we're only getting about 12 FPS running at 1080p on low. And mysteriously, after a few minutes, the game seems to pick up and we're going around 27, 28 FPS. Now I'll say that this works okay, but for an M2 Ultra, I'm expecting a lot more. Yes, there are translation layers at work here, including Rosetta 2 to ARM64, Windows code into macOS code through Wine, and also the DirectX to Metal translation layer too. However, on my N1 Max chip, the game just seems to run way better. We're running at the same settings, 1080p low, but I'm able to achieve about 30, 35 FPS on the M1 Max. So I'm expecting a lot more out of the M2 Ultra. So the theory I have at the moment is that because the Ultra chip's design is basically composed of two Max chips fused together into a single die, that's basically double the normal number of CPU cores compared to a normal M1 Max chip. And it just might be the case that Game Porting Toolkit or macOS Sonoma Beta don't correctly allocate game processors to the CPU cores, potentially harming gaming performance. And this is why I also think that tech reviewers like Linus Tech Tips, who also benchmarked on the Ultra chip but the M1 variant instead, was only managing to get something like 12 FPS in game. I also tested out Cyberpunk on my M2 Ultra, and weirdly enough, I was getting pretty terrible performance too, and my benchmarking numbers were in the single digits. And in game, the performance was also really bad, and the audio had this kind of weird desyncing issue as well. And this is in pretty stark contrast to my experience on the M1 Max, where I could easily hit over 30 FPS at 1440p, running at the low graphical preset. So all in all, it's definitely possible to run Cyberpunk 2077 well on Apple Silicon Mac. However, there still remains a developer's beta, so there's probably quite a few bugs to be worked out, especially on the Ultra line of Apple Silicon chips. However, there isn't to say that there aren't plenty of Windows games that do run correctly through Game Porting Toolkit. I'm actually in the middle of working on a series of Windows games that work at 4K 60 frames per second on the M2 Ultra, and one of these games is God of War. Now, the rendering of this game isn't perfect. There is this weird crosshatch blue marking on character models, which is a bug that also appeared when trying to run this game through Crossover. But unlike Crossover, Game Porting Toolkit doesn't require the modification of the EXE, so it's actually far simpler to get working, and it works extremely fluidly on the M2 Ultra. Here we're running the game at 4K resolution, using all of the default graphics settings. However, we do have FSR set to performance mode, which is basically upscaling 1080p to 4K. I'll be covering this game in a little bit more detail and other Windows games that work through Game Porting Toolkit at 4K 60 frames per second. Make sure to watch out for that next video. So next up, we're doing a bit of game emulation using Wii U Jinx to emulate Nintendo Switch games on the Apple Silicon Mac. And the game that everyone wants to get running is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, Wii U Jinx really is in its first initial stages of development. It hasn't been officially updated since its first 1.1.0 release back in November 2022. However, you can use nightly builds, which are specifically tailored to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. However, they are far from perfect and we're really sitting on the cutting edge of what's possible with Nintendo Switch emulation. Here the performance is kind of middling. It's actually very similar to how it performs on my M1 Max chip. It's probably a limitation of the CPU single threaded performance limits. But if you're really interested in trying this game, then make sure to check out my video tutorial. And rest assured, the performance of this emulator is being worked on all of the time. Every day you check back, somebody's made a new mod or fix, which improves performance a little bit more. And eventually I predict this is gonna be playable at 60 FPS at some point in the near future. So lastly, we have the game Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is another Nintendo Switch game being emulated through Wii U Jinx. And here I just wanted to show that there is possible to get games to take advantage of the 4K screen. So the game is locked to 30 FPS, but if you disable VSync, then we can automatically get this up to 60 frames per second. And next, we want to improve the image quality, so we can change the resolution scale to say two times. And you can see that the squares and the icons, etc., are substantially sharper than before. If you're still at solid 60, then push it up even higher to say three times resolution, and we've basically got a 4K resolution being emulated, which is far better than what the Nintendo Switch is originally capable of. 
So anyway, it's very cool to see Ryujin emulation working so well on the Mac. If you want to find out how to do this, then make sure to click on the link in the description. I hope you found my M2 Ultra gaming video interesting. If you want me to test out any other games on the system before I return it, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.